Bienvenue and welcome to day two of the OpenStack Summit. Please welcome Chief Operating Officer, OpenStack Foundation, Mark Collier. Good morning, everybody. Glad you all could make it here for day two. So I want to talk about a few things. Um, and I want to first start with a quote that a lot of you are probably familiar with. It's from William Gibson. He's a futurist, and over 20 years ago, he said that the future is here. It's just not very evenly distributed. And that's a pretty powerful idea. I think that's why so many people get excited about this. Um, but when you think about it, it's actually kind of sad, right? I mean. I would like to see the future be more evenly distributed, and I guess I'm, I'm a bit of an optimist in that I believe that 20 years from now, the future will be more evenly distributed. And there are a lot of headlines that'll tell you, you know, all the doom and gloom in the world, but I think that uh, there's a lot of reason for optimism. And I think we'll look back 20 years from now at this quote and say, you know, he was right at the time, but a lot's changed, and in fact, the world will be more evenly distributed, and the future will be more evenly distributed. And so I'm gonna be talking all about distributed, the concept of distributed as it applies to technology, of course, um, but also society and just all the ways in which this trend is fundamentally changing everything about our world, everything about our planet. It's the biggest trend in our lifetime, in my opinion. And I think if we pay attention to it, we might see some reasons why OpenStack um, does have some relevance in this, uh, in this trend. Um, so when you think about evenly distributed opportunity, right, it's, it's economic opportunity, it's technology access, certainly access to the internet is, is a fundamental part of the future. And not everybody's there yet. So, you know, William Gibson is right today. Not everybody has access to the internet, believe it or not. You know, we are all very lucky. Everybody in this room is probably tweeting right now. Well, that's, that's not the case, you know, everywhere in the world. But over the next six years, another billion people will come online. And the thing that is really important to note is that they're not just getting online, they're, they're all going to have smartphones. So this is not very long from now, six years from now, another billion people on the planet will have internet access on a smartphone. And that is distributed power, right? And when we talk about evenly distributing the future and economic opportunity, I think we have to not just limit our field of vision to the West or the first world or you know, the rich countries that some of us may, may have flown here from or live in, um, we need to really think about the whole world and everybody's opportunity. And if you look uh, at the projections in sub-Saharan Africa, you'll, you'll see that in just five years, two-thirds of people in sub-Saharan Africa will have access to 3G coverage. That's, that's incredible. I mean, for me, this just is something I personally am passionate about. I think that everybody should have access to the technologies and the economic opportunities of our times. It shouldn't be limited to a handful of countries or people. And so I think this is very uh, good reason for optimism, that the future will be more evenly distributed, that we're on the right path. And if you think about you know, those phones, those smartphones that the next billion people will have, that all of you have in your pockets or perhaps that you're typing on right now, um, they're really supercomputers, right? I mean, the amount of power that's in your hands, that distributed power that you carry with you in your pocket is a supercomputer. So as we think about the next billion people getting that access, you know, everybody, gets a supercomputer, right? Uh, that's, that's pretty exciting, you know? I think this is a stat I recently read in a 
in Dreesen Horowitz's presentation that uh, kind of blew me away. So in, on iPhone launch weekend, Apple sold 25 times more transistors than all PCs on the planet Earth in 1995. That's on that one weekend. So that, that's just a massive transformation in terms of power in people's hands. And it's not just about these $1,000 phones that some of us may be fortunate enough to, to afford, especially if you're an OpenStack engineer. You're probably doing okay right now. Um, but, you know, there, there are a lot of people out there that are now having access to smartphones because of these types of initiatives. You know, Google has an op, a, a handset now that runs Android in, uh, primarily in India. It's about $100 in the Firefox uh, phone is targeted at $35. So, you know, that's, that's a pretty big gulf in terms of um, $1,000 for a new iPhone versus $35, but the fundamental power in your hand is not that much different. If it's connecting you to people, if it's allowing you to organize as, a, as a citizens in your country and affect change, it's a lot of power. So when you combine that ubiquitous connectivity which you know, many of us enjoy, but the rest of the world is quickly going to have access to, with a supercomputer in your pocket, that is distributed power. And I think we really have to let this sink in, just how fundamental of a change this is gonna be for our planet, and for governments, and for all of us. And it's exciting, um, because when I talk about power, I'm not just talking about MIPS and CPU, computation and transistors. I mean, we're talking about the ability to make the world the, the world we want. And hopefully, in my view, it's one in which you know, the future is more evenly distributed and those opportunities can reach out to every country in Africa and beyond. And uh, to share a few more data points here uh, about this trend, um, this particular graph shows the interest peaking in an application called FireChat. Now, many of you may not have heard of FireChat, but this is an application on a mobile phone. It can run on a you know, $35 handset as well as a $1,000 handset. And this exploded in popularity in Hong Kong during the recent protests when people found that they had limited connectivity to the internet, and in fact, they needed to stay organized and so they used a peer-to-peer -peer application that was actually able to keep people connected through a mesh network without even having access to the internet. So that's distributed power. It's affecting the whole world. And you know, another example that I think was uh, really quite interesting that happened just in the past couple of weeks, many of you may be familiar with this, but in Hungary, there was a proposal to tax the internet so remember that, that distributed power, one of the, the two key elements is ubiquitous connectivity. So they weren't gonna cut off the internet, they were just gonna tax it, and people were not happy about that. In fact, they took to the streets with mass protests. You know, do not take away my internet, they said. And then in fact, they had to cancel this, this internet tax. It was gonna be a tax on bandwidth. And so the question you have to ask yourself is, in 2014, you know, this happened in the last two weeks, you know, where is the power right now? Is it the guy in the suit? Or is it all those people in the street, you know, holding up their, their cell phone? I think it's pretty clear that the power's shifting, it's becoming more distributed, and, you know, this is a, something that's affecting democracy in a positive way, in my opinion. Um, and I think that's pretty exciting. So. Once upon a time, all you had to do was be the guy in the suit, and that's no longer the case. Uh, I don't have a suit on, thankfully. But uh, <laughs> anyway, I, I think these are all just signs of this trend of distributed power. Uh, but it's not just about you know, citizens and democracy and organization and making the world we want. I think there's, there's a lot of signs that economic opportunity is starting to become more distributed. This is a really cool uh, excerpt from an amazing report that Bill Gates put out. Now, you know, many of you uh, Linux faithful, once upon a time probably 
uh, had Bill Gates on your dartboard, but um, he's gone on to do some pretty amazing things with his billions of dollars. And this report I found incredibly inspiring, a lot of very good reason for optimism. And you know, the picture on the left is Nairobi in 1969. And on the right is the same city in 2009. So I think that there is a lot of evidence that opportunity is spreading, and it's not limited to just a handful of countries. And in my view, that's a very positive thing. And I think some of the technologies like ubiquitous connectivity, mobile computing, and of course, we know that all those experiences are backed by cloud. So eventually I, I, I uh, have to talk about cloud. I promised Jonathan that uh, I wouldn't just use this time to talk about my economic views. Um, so we actually are gonna move a little bit down into, uh, from humanity to, uh, to IT. So I guess we're gonna have to talk about IT eventually. And if there's any time left, you know, I'll talk about OpenStack. <laughs> but no promises. Um, so, IT. You know, where does this trend towards distributed power play out in IT? You know, my thesis is it's playing out everywhere all around us, so it's, IT is certainly no, not immune to that trend. And so, you know, in the bad old days, as an employee, uh, IT said, I built your Windows machine, Dave, and you took your Windows machine and applied the 300 patches to it and off you went, right? You didn't have a lot of choice. And many of you probably didn't want a Windows machine, but that's what you got. And times are certainly changing in that regard. And Jonathan mentioned this yesterday in his keynote, that power is distributing to the business units, right? They are making more decisions about technology than ever before because it affects the bottom line, because technology is strategic, because software is strategic, and central planning committees are not what they used to be. Um, and that's A-OK -okay with me. I think you'll see that the power actually is distributed even further than departments and into individuals, right? I'm sure many of you, uh, if you didn't like the phone that your company gave you or they didn't give you a phone, you went and bought the one you wanted or a laptop, et cetera. So that's certainly a trend in the IT world. And, you know, to really kind of boil this down to my core belief here, which is that over the long run, distributed beats monolithic. Now, this does have some applicability in cloud computing. I promised I would eventually talk about cloud. So I think if we look at the cloud computing market and ask ourselves, you know, how is this trend towards distributed power playing out? in the cloud computing market. And I think, you know, let's be honest, you know, there's a monolith in the room that, you know, we can't ignore. And, um, you know, they're a very powerful company. And uh, look, they have some amazing technology that a lot of people have found valuable. Um, but the great irony, I think, of cloud computing is that while cloud architectures are distributed by nature, in fact, we used to call it distributed computing before some marketing guy came along and said, you know, cloud is a better name for it. Um, so the architectures have been distributed, but not the power. Uh, it's, you know, been fairly uh, dominated by one player. And, you know, the headlines will certainly bear that out, right? Amazon dominates, dominates, dominates. I mean, this is what we've been hearing in the headlines for, for a while, right? And, uh, and they have a very impressive track record. And I think, however, if we take a little bit closer look, you know, it's fair to point out that these headlines are all from 2013, and things move fast in a distributed world, right? I mean, a month ago, Hungary was gonna tax the internet, and now there's protests and they're not. So, so things move quickly, and headlines in 2013 are, are not necessarily the best indicator of what's really happening on, on the ground. And so, you know, for me, I would say that, you know, if one monolithic provider were enough, you know, 
then what are all of you doing here? Uh, probably have some other opportunities, some other things you're interested in besides Amazon. Um, and in fact, if we look forward, you know, past the headlines and look more at the trend lines, I think you'll see that, that in fact OpenStack, um, which is a distributed effort by, by design, built by all of you, used by all of you from hundreds of companies, you know, we're on, we're on a pretty good trend here, and I think that this may not have shown up in the headlines yet, but in the trend lines, um, I would say that the distributed power of OpenStack that's built by many different people and used by in many different use cases is a pretty powerful thing. And, you know, Amazon is certainly impressive, but I think one provider is, is simply not going to be enough. And just yesterday, we heard from some very impressive users, BMW, Time Warner Cable, BBVA, who decided that they wanted cloud, but they needed it in their own data center. This is not unusual. Um, this is a, a very popular model for uh, cloud computing, and OpenStack's one of the ways to do that. And so, you know, because software is eating the world, as everybody has been saying for a while, um, it's no surprise, right, that everyone's gonna have a little bit different cloud strategy, because it affects every business. So there's not gonna be one cloud strategy that's gonna work for everybody. There's not gonna be one cloud provider that's gonna work for everybody. And in my view, you know, what we really need is not one vendor, we need one stack. And that's actually uh, what we can collaborate on across the industry with input from users. And in this world, um, we believe that the distributed trend is gonna play itself out with, of course, distributed computing, but certainly uh, with a number of different vendors. You know, we have over 400 companies supporting OpenStack. This is one of the major reasons that we hear users are interested in, in adopting OpenStack, because they have a lot of choice, as Jonathan talked about yesterday. We certainly have a lot of different models, okay? Uh, whether it's a distribution, an appliance, a public cloud, a private cloud, a hybrid cloud. And I'm excited for you all to hear from some of our users uh, that are gonna be speaking today because many of them are pressing the, uh, pressing the envelope on the many different models in which you can use OpenStack to meet your needs. And it's certainly uh, distributed by vertical. You know, we have banks, we have film and television. Uh, many different industries uh, are adopting OpenStack in their own way. And, and ultimately, you know, distributed R&D is what builds such a great platform on such a fast pace. You know, we've had over 2,000 developers contribute to OpenStack from 100 companies from all over the world. And so, at the end of the day, I think that uh, my thesis and my claim to you is that power will be distributed in every level, um, but including cloud computing. I do not think cloud will be immune to this trend. And I think power is actually already distributed when we think about cloud computing. So I'll just share a little bit more data with you. Um, I love data and, and graphs, so, uh, and maps for that matter, so hopefully uh, you'll enjoy a quick tour through the wide world of cloud computing. Um, so this map, does anybody know what these dots represent? Anybody? AWS, yeah, so these are these are uh, data centers or regions where Amazon has, has public clouds. And you, know, you might look at this and say, well, that's, that's very impressive. They have a lot of capacity. Um, they're in you know, every region of the world. But if that capacity is not in the country that you need, then it's not really capacity, right? Like if you, if you need a cloud in France, and someone comes to you and says, don't worry, I've got one in Germany, you know, that claim is uh, a little bit suspect, and I would say that uh, it's not really capacity, it's audacity to tell you that, uh, that that's good enough for you. Don't worry, we figured it out, we're in Germany. Well, that's great if you need the technology they have and you're in Germany, but if you need a cloud in France, 
might not be enough. And so if we look at all of the public clouds we have today, powered by OpenStack on the same map, you know, we have multiple clouds in Germany, multiple clouds in France, multiple clouds in the UK, and many other regions of the world, Mexico City, and I think that's pretty exciting. In fact, you know, just to highlight one example, a recent OpenStack powered public cloud that you should really learn more about because they're doing some really innovative things is called Cloud and Heat. Now this is a company that is actually distributed in terms of how they deploy their cloud into multiple buildings. And the reason why they have these buildings distributed throughout Germany is that they are using the heat, the excess heat from the servers to heat the buildings, hence cloud and heat. So there are many different ways, many different models, many ways to innovate. And that is certainly what we're seeing with the OpenStack public clouds. And I believe that we will see many, many more throughout the world when we reconvene at our next summit in just six months. And last but not least, um, if you add in all the private clouds running OpenStack, just the ones we know about, the ones, uh, many of you who've been nice enough to fill out our user survey and tell us about your clouds, I think you'll see that in fact, OpenStack is everywhere today. And that's just evidence that one provider is not enough. And I think that that's pretty self-evident at this point, or we wouldn't be seeing clouds all over the planet. And you know, at the end of the day, one thing I wanna make clear is that I didn't get up here today to, to bash Amazon, believe it or not. Uh, I actually think that they're, very, they're a very impressive technology company. And in fact, um, two out of three of the people we're gonna be hearing from today, of our users, are using Amazon with OpenStack. And that's great. And you know, contrary to what you may see in the headlines, um, OpenStack actually has no natural enemies, believe it or not. Open source is really not about enemies. It's about helping everybody use the technology in the way that they want. And in fact, you know, much like human beings have no natural predators, OpenStack has, has no natural enemies. Amazon's not an enemy. There, there really are no enemies. OpenStack is available for everyone for free. Anyone can come to the summit, provided you buy your ticket in time. So remember that next time. Um, but you know, we want everybody here. It's a big tent, and that's the nature of open source. And sometimes that gets a little bit lost in all the headlines, but um, at the end of the day, uh, it's exciting to hear from users today who are using OpenStack with Amazon. And that's absolutely the right thing to do for them. And if we look at OpenStack itself, the technology, I promised I would maybe get to OpenStack if we, got, if we had enough time, so all right. a Couple of minutes on OpenStack. So the technology itself is, is distributed. You know, distributed computing, cloud, they're, they're really kind of one and the same. And you know, I believe that if we look forward a couple of years, and we think about where OpenStack is going to evolve to, it, it, it itself as a technology will become more distributed, I believe. And there are a lot of discussions going on about this in the design summits this week, and with the technical committee and a lot of the leaders in the community about how we can make it easier for our users to mix and match and compose different services made up of different OpenStack projects. Because you may not need every single project to solve your need. And so I don't think OpenStack itself as a technology will be immune to this trend. And I think we'll see stronger API contracts, more emphasis on how individual components can be mixed and matched to meet the needs of different people. Because at the end of the day, you know, OpenStack is not trying to be a monolith any more than uh, anyone else. Um, if we wanna to be on the right side of history, we should be thinking of ourselves as distributed all the way down. So the last thing I wanna do is talk a little bit about the summits. Now, we are certainly a very distributed community. So we have people here in this room from 59 countries. And if your country is not on this map, please come see me afterwards and we'll, we'll color it in. We have orange crayons in the back, but I think I got them all. So this is how diverse and how distributed our community is. And it's very important that we brought our very first summit 
in Europe to Paris because we have a huge community here, but not just to serve the needs of the, the community in Paris, but we all came from across the globe to be here. And that's the way we manage our summits. They're all global by nature, but we do distribute them around the world. And a year and a half ago, we went to Portland, um, and then we moved on to Hong Kong, our first summit outside of the United States, a huge milestone. And of course, uh, Atlanta six months ago, and today we're in Paris. So those of you who are astute observers may have noticed on the back of your hoodies that uh, in fact, the road does go on from Paris, and there are a couple more stops planned for next year. So a few of you have probably uh, deduced where we're going next year, but I'm very excited to tell you that we are going to Vancouver in May of 2015, which is a gorgeous city, and I hope all of you can make it and uh, take that train. There's not an actual train, but it's, it's a metaphor. Um, stay with me here. Um, and then on to Tokyo. <laughs> and you know, what's so exciting to me about this trend, I'm into trends if you haven't figured that out by now, um, is that this will be our third, by the time we get to Tokyo, this will be our third consecutive summit outside the United States, which is just, absolutely fitting for a distributed community working on a distributed cloud platform. And I hope that that trend continues and I hope to see you all in Vancouver and Tokyo and around the rest of the conference. Thank you very much.